What is good, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, you're going to be listening to an excerpt from one of my latest podcast episodes featuring Melanie, who is a photographer and artist based here in the UK. She focuses on a lot of interesting, alternative, and more sustainable style of photography, using a lot of the elements around her to do really interesting and innovative things. I hope you enjoy this episode. So yeah, so the other part you mentioned has to do with reclaiming silver. Um, I've heard about this from a couple different places, and it, I find it very interesting. Um, can you just kind of explain what the general idea there is and then um, potentially how, like what the process looks like? Yeah, so the the idea behind the project um, is to reclaim silver from the photographic fixer and then make pieces of copper jewellery where this and try and get the silver to come from the fixative to the yeah. jewellery itself. Um, or even to kind of like sculptures eventually. But yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, the idea is that when the silver comes out of the fixative, it doesn't go down the sink. So yeah. the process that I'm actually doing is to um, get an electronic circuit of quite a low ampage and get the silver to be attracted to the copper. Um, and I do that uh, just by putting an anode and a cathode into fixer and yeah. putting, a, putting a, a current through it. And it works pretty well. I've been doing a residency this week in Birmingham um, with a scientist called Leah Nani Alkansell, and she mm -hmm. um, has been helping me to do this in quite a in quite a scientific way, so that it's replicable in the future. Yeah. And to try and get a really strong coating, so it doesn't kind of rub off on people's skin and things like that. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, that's been really exciting. The only thing about it is that it does let off hydrogen sulfide gas so uh -oh. that's one of the things about doing it in a lab it's actually be, being able to use a fuming cabinet and not being too risky with our health sure so, sure yeah interesting i mean i guess there's various there, there's various things that are valuable about that process one is the silver is not going down the drain as you suggested um and then I guess the other side of that is like silver itself is it's not like a cheap thing, right? Like like silver, the raw material is is super valuable. And that's one of the reasons like why film has gone up in price over time. Um, so, yeah, that, that's pretty cool. And the process right now, you said it's working pretty well, like you're actually able to recover. Like, what, let's say what what amount of silver can you recover from you know, a bottle of fixer? Is it like all of it? Is it smaller amounts? It's actually quite a lot. Um, yeah. We were using, um, I think we used two kind of half a litre bottles of fixer, like used fixer. Mm -hmm. um, so that's probably like three or four films or a couple of yeah. prints. And we were able to properly coat a few pieces of jewellery out of that. Very so cool. yeah, there's, there's loads in there. I'm really excited about using all the other fix that I've got because yeah, I reckon... Yeah complete lots of things no that's cool I, I could see a situation where someone has like like let's say in London someone just has like a studio and they're like yeah bring your fixer here and I will take care of the rest um that would be cool because I think th that would create kind of a, a supply and demand scenario you know where someone wants as much silver as they can get and uh you know it would be good it, it would help us feel better about how we're doing film photography at home with the developing process because I feel like it is um, it is very cumbersome for the average person to like follow rules. Also, rules oftentimes aren't very clear. And then and then they depend on where you are, even within the same country. If you're in a city versus you're in like, you know, in the woods somewhere and, and what kind of like, you know, uh, what kind of system you have to handle waste and then there's all these different things. So, you know, having a very easy kind of cool thing like that would actually motivate people I, at least i think it would be a, a a nice motivator to just actually say okay i'm not going to throw this down the drain let me just send it to this person and then it's all good it's like a, the milk person you know you go return your your <laughs> bottles and, and get some more in return and then the fixer itself once you get the silver out of it is the fixer usable at all or, or is it just waste at that point um so i tend to reclaim the silver once i've really exhausted the fix okay. so i'll i'll use it maybe like 10 times and then yeah. after these days it's kind of exhausted and less potent anyway yeah and then you can get all of the silver out of it gotcha um, well i have done a bit of research into what labs do and i think 
some labs send them off to companies and the companies have a really special like a really um precise way of getting the silver out yeah. of fixer and then they send it to the bullion market so um that was interesting to research as well <laughs> to the balloon market the um bullion market the um so they can sell it on as kind of um a big block of silver ah gotcha gotcha okay Super interesting yeah i mean it, it's good it, it, there's no reason why that you shouldn't like upcycle or, or recycle as much of all of these parts as possible say so, i really love the idea of like things that you can't control interfering with the with exactly the i think for me that's one of the reasons i like analog photography it's like you can only control so many things easily at least um so there's always going to be some sort of variability at least the way that i do it because i know i guess you could make everything very strict if you really wanted to and perfect let's say yeah. um but like i developed my own film and and that kind of stuff and you know that's not an experimental process but i'm I'm not the most like by the book or like super strict person so you know i might do a couple extra seconds here or like maybe i don't use enough liquid there or the temperature is slightly in this direction um i for me it's just like it's part of the fun it's like oh yeah you know it's gonna come out and it'll look fine but this time was not the same as that time was not the same as that other time and uh, I don't know, that kind of just like excites me. I think for some people, it scares them. For me, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, that's fun. <laughs> is there anything that you're working on that you've seen that is theoretically less artistic? Like, for example, something that, you know, the, the average person can just kind of jump on and, you know, make work for them well and, and have it be a little bit less experimental and more kind of standard, let's say. Absolutely. And I think caffeinol is a good example of that just because, there's that whole caffeinol cookbook that you exactly. can use and that's been super tried and tested and mm -hmm. yes yeah, people have tried that process that is really um easy to replicate and really good to get results so yeah, yeah i highly recommend that as a way in and as a way to kind of yeah make work that's a bit more um archival and sure yeah no that's cool i use caffeinol a bunch um I actually used it to print as well. And I really enjoyed the, it, oh, I enjoyed yeah. it more for printing than for developing film. Um, just cause I, I feel like it really gives a look to the paper and it, you know, if you take the right scene and the right film stock, you can really make something that looks like it was from, you know, 200 years ago, like it, or you know, let's say 150 or something. All right, y'all, I hope that was a good time. I definitely enjoyed talking to her. And there's a couple of things that I learned from her that I'm looking to incorporate into my photography as well. If you enjoyed that, go check out the entire podcast, links down below. And until the next one, y'all, I'm out.